story yesterday. So, topic of my lecture is about quantum entanglement and choreography, and they have a very <coughs> close relationship, as we explain. But let me start with a basic aspect of quantum entanglement using also language of quantum information theory. And then I'd like to explain the calculation of entanglement entropy in quantum field theory, especially conformal field theory, which is directly related to ADS CFT correspondence. And then I go to the holographic calculation, uh, taking into account uh, recent uh, progresses in this field. And finally, I like to end up with the, some concrete example, and especially I pick up the one which is called uh, local quantum quenches. So quantum quenches is a kind of excitation, but when we change the Hamiltonian as instantaneously at some time, but especially we focus on the local excitations in the theory, and this is a very fundamental excited state, and we will see some how to find some uh, time evolution of entanglement entropy, which is also captures very interesting aspects of the uh, gravity dual space time. And here I just list a few references. So the most famous one is that this new recent Chuan's textbook about quantum computation and quantum information. And also there are recent nice textbook by Wilde. This is about quantum information theory, which I like also very much. And about this holography and conformance, there are many uh, reviews. But this I pick up uh, ourselves one well, with Mukundo uh, Langamani, which is published in Spring Lecture. But there are many excellent reviews like Rams Dong's one and uh, Dan Harrow's and uh, also field theory, it's Calabrese Cardi, and also Cassini and Velta, and so on. So let me start with the first topic, which is quantum entanglement. So I'd like to characterize quantum entanglement. So first of all, I just want to first say vaguely, so anyway, we want to Explain what's the quantum entanglement, I just write QE for simply. First of all, we, I just want to say vaguely, quantum entanglement is a two-body two -body correlation, correlations uh, special to quantum mechanics. So we just ignore all correlation which happens in quantum mechanics. Uh, which happens in classical mechanics, but we just pick, focus on quantum mechanics, quantum mechanical correlation. I will explain what definition just here. So let's first give some formal definition of the quantum entanglement. So when we have a quantum entanglement. So let's consider the first simpler case where we, we are considering pure state. So what I mean is a quantum entanglement in pure state. Pure state is just a state described by single quantum wave function. And uh, so more general state is called the mixed so state. Some case we, so whole, if, we, if we know wave function, of course we know, that means we completely know the system. But sometimes, like the canonical ensemble of thermal system, sometimes we don't know precisely what the system uh, precisely is. So we don't know precise wave function. But uh, sometimes we have some probability distribution. So there are several candidates so that uh, we have some probability one. We have some one fast wave function. And uh, so there are other possibility, P2, which is a second possibility of wave function. And we can even sum over many states. So this is a kind of probability description. And this is described by density matrix, as we know. So this case is called, we call it a mixed state. And that's, but a single wave function, if we know that, then we call it pure state. So let's first discuss quantum entanglement in pure state. Just start with simple state. So so if we say the system, so we already need to talk about two body correlations. Right? And we often say it's like system A and B, we decompose system 
into A and B. And even you can assume some other guy. So you have A, B, but you can also assume some other C, D. But anyway, we focus on this some separation into some two systems, A, B, and we are talking about correlation between these two bodies. And if we say, so there are some existence of some quantum entanglement between A and B. And B, and we assume pure state. That means we don't have a C, actually. In this special case, we only have a total system is A, B. So that means total system, total Hilbert space. Um, yeah, so maybe I read it. So total Hilbert space is just factorized HA, Hilbert space hold A, and zero space B. So this case, we have some pure state, some psi, some pure state. You can write it psi. And this psi belongs to the Hilbert space AB, so we write it this way. So this is a kind of quite common uh, expression. So if we have some state which lives on the Hilbert space ABC, we write it this way. If the Hilbert space is AB, we write it this way. And then, so the definition of quantum entanglement is that, so some state, this state which is defined in AB, cannot be factorized into direct product states. There are some existence of some states. This is orbitary. Any candidate is fine. So, but something like this. Maybe we can eliminate and maybe we can call it tilde. <coughs> so, if the state is not decomposed into direct product state, we say such a theory, such a state has a quantum entanglement. If they are direct product, little in a direct product, there are no correlation, obviously. So A and B are completely independent. So this is a very simple definition. And this is a quite of, almost you know, quite enough for you know, recent development of especially storing theory side. But actually, uh, I mean, if we think about a more general mixed state, quantum entanglement is more subtle, and uh, whose aspect is not completely understood, I think, from, from the viewpoint of string theory, so maybe quite in interesting uh, development. Maybe we have some in your future. So let me describe this. So we are talking about quantum entanglement in mixed states. And uh, so this definition, so now we are talking about the density matrix rho. So rho has, rho has quantum entanglement. And if I'm not leave, Rho is not separable. And of course, we have to define what the separable means. So if the rho is separable, there are no entanglement. But if we, the state is not separable, then it's an entanglement. And separable means, so separable, so we define the class of density matrix called separable. This can be decomposed in the following way. K is some discrete, we can take just discrete uh, label. And this is some K, and some density matrix A, and some density matrix B. So these are both uh, density matrix, some density matrix. We don't care the I mean, details, just, just if satisfied, density matrix condition, that means, that means, uh, so rho is a L meet, self joint, and trace of rho is normalized to be one, and rho should be non-negative. Eigen values should be non-negative. So this is a definition, mathematical definition of density matrix, if that's satisfying. And also PI, PK is important. PK is a probability distribution. So if we sum up all of K, this is one. This also guarantees this normalization normalization of this guy, but also it should be positive. PK also should be positive, uh, or positive. <coughs> so uh, naively, this might, you might think this is always maybe possible, but this is not true because this is, we have many conditions like this. <coughs> so if this is possible, then there are no entanglement, quantum entanglement. 
But if this is not possible, we call it the entangled state. So as you see, this condition is much more difficult compared with pure state entanglement, and this more uh, study of this mixed of state entanglement is still kind of uh, developing subject in quantum information theory. So now, but this is a quite general story. I'd like to explain some explicit example. And this is a so-called two, let's consider some two-qubit state. So there are two speeds. So in the simplest case, so if we have a only one spin, there are no quantum entanglement, even though quantum mechanics has a linear superposition of wave function, but this is not enough to tell us about the entanglement. Entanglement is a two-body correlation, so we need at least two, two guys. And let's focus on the following state. First candidate of state is like this. So we can choose another, other. Ah, so here I mean, so zero means up spin, and one is down spin. It's quite usual in quantum computation and quantum information. So we just zero one state. This is a classical, but this is a, not classical bit. Classical bit is just, just zero one. Two, uh, I mean, but here we are talking quantum mechanics, so it's called qubit. And so this is a subsystem A. So we have two qubits, and we call it just A and B. So we have two electrons, A and B. And this is a one state. And let's assume this case. Even though this is non trivial, we have non trivial linear combination, but this is direct product. So, this case, we say no entanglement. So, just follow from this definition. And indeed, they are completely independent. A and B are independent. But there are other guy which actually, what we call, maybe we, we can define this guy. It's Let's call five plus. This is also not. And uh, this guy is like following state. So this now we combine AB. So we write it this way. A zero zero means right. AB means zero. Of course zero A and zero B. And so we take this way. So this is a again linear combination, but it's non trivial. So this case, we cannot decompose into direct product state. So this case is quantum entanglement exists. And it, indeed, we can find some non-trivial correlation, right? Because if we, if we know first spin, A spins zero or up, then immediately we know the second spin is also up. So there are strong con correlation between these two guys, two bodies. And this is only happens in quantum mechanics because we are talking about linear combination of wave function. That is only happens in quantum mechanics. No, nothing happens in, nothing of this happens in classical mechanics. <coughs> so, um, in the same way, we can define so more general such states, such a entangled state. So zero, zero, which plays some role later. And this is a, a plus case sigma, but we can put minus sign. And also we can this define this guy. This is a, these are also normal uh, vectors. And this four state is called Bell state. Bell state are uh, actually state with your maximum entanglement. <coughs> now, sometimes we can call this the EPR state, Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen, also. They are essentially the same thing. <coughs> but they are on four bases. This is, I mean, two times two. We have four dimension of BS3, these two qubits. So we have this, uh, this four states are kind of orthogonal to each other on this basic basis of this. It's quite useful. And then, so one, so we, we talked about this entanglement, like this correlation, which is only happens in quantum mechanics. But there are another way of saying the same thing. So more explicitly, this is called Bell's inequality.
but this is bio, bio rated, bio rich. Bio rich. Very quality bio rich. Quite famous fact, which happens for this data state, entangled state. So let me quickly give you this. So for that, so we define some A, B, A prime, B prime. These are, uh, sorry, maybe I, I just say it, A, A prime and B, B prime. These are so spin A, spin A, this guy, and this is spin. Some com these are kind of some components. Spin, so that satisfies, so like power matrix, you can even just power matrix, so square is just one. So some operator, which is the square, is one. <coughs> but in, we can think of the same thing for classical mechanics, right? We have some classical spin, and that has some component which corresponds to the axis of the spin. So we can just specify the axis of the spin, that's that. And one component, x component or z component, that is just we can call it A. And then we consider following expectation value. So A, B, this expectation value under some probability description, distribution, A, B prime plus A prime B, and this minus sign is quite important here. And A prime B prime. And if we take this thing, so we can just factorize this, right? So A, B minus B prime plus, this is like A prime B plus B prime. So if we think this way, so let's assume theory is classical. Then, so this guy might be, so let's take this A again, but it's a zero, uh, so plus or, so this takes a plus minus one. So this might be uh, two or zero. But if this is true, obviously this sum is zero, right? So this is one minus one, so, and if this is zero, obviously this is two. And this is a one, plus minus one, plus minus one. So that means we see, so if this is true, this is zero, so that means always this is bounded by two. So classically, So we always find this is below two, absolute values. <coughs> but in quantum mechanics, so we have some interesting result, but we have to somehow good choice of state. So we choose state is this better state, something called pi plus square root of two and zero, zero plus one, one. Okay, and let's choose this guy. And we choose A to be a sigma x, A prime to be sigma z, and B equal to square root two, so some mixture of x and z. This still is, you know, satisfy B squared one. This is also just changes, a, just a rotation of the spin. And B prime, is square root of two and uh, minus sign. So once we choose this, well, we can just compute this for more general parameter and see when you know interesting thing happens. So that way we can find this. <coughs> but if we do this, then we can calculate this guy, <coughs> psi, and this guy, this a b, blah blah blah. So a b. Uh, a P prime and A P A prime B prime and <coughs> so we can see this this is some just intermediate part of the result. So it's like <coughs> zero E minus B prime zero this one because we absorbed A. A is shifting the zero to one, so we I have this matrix element. And similarly, we have opposite shift like this, and also this guy, the other two, uh, zero, B plus B prime, zero, and uh, also this is Z, so it's like minus, minus, this is a sigma Z, this guy is sigma Z, so B 
plus p prime one. And uh, we know this guy, this we take this ratio, then it's square root two sigma x. This is the same thing. And this guy is a square root of square root two sigma z. So the square root appears because of this definition. So that and this contributes the same just one, one, but times the square root of two. So we get the square root of two here. On the similar way, so we have two times the counter is half of two. So in the end this goes to two square root of two. So this obviously go beyond this bound. So this is a very famous uh, Bell's inequality violation. So this only this happens for because we are talking about this, such a quantum mechanically correlated system. So this doesn't happen in classical mechanics. Okay. So this is a quite elementary introduction of quantum entanglement, but. Uh, we have to, so this is just, uh, we are talking about just uh, uh, abstractly, we just talk about quantum entanglement, phenomenon of quantum entanglement. But there, in physics, we have to uh, consider some quantity which measures the amount of this quantum entanglement. And this is namely called entanglement entropy. So first, I'd like to give uh, uh, some, so first, I'd like to give some definition of quantum entanglement, in which is in, very, in a way so very friendly to physicists and especially for string theorists and quantum field theorists. And then I'd like to also give another interpretation of quantum entanglement, entanglement entropy, which is in the more quantum information theoretical language. <coughs> so I go to entanglement entropy. So but this is wrong. Uh, we just simply, simply call E E. This is the entanglement entropy. And so again, so this step difference is quite important. Let's focus on first case, pure state. Unfortunately, it's not easy to, there are no easy story for entanglement. Entanglement measure some amount of entanglement for mixed state. I, I'll come, maybe I have some time to briefly mention this, but, or you can ask me some, maybe discussion session if you like, but I'm focusing on first one. For pure state, the amount, some quantify, some. Quantum entanglement, amount of quantum entanglement between a and B, so there are two body entanglement, it's measured by so called entanglement entropy. Simple. And then, so the definition of entanglement entropy is like this. Anyway, so we have pure state, which depends on, uh, lives on AB, so that means here was space A times HB. This is a total, total Hilbert space. This is a total Hilbert space, A, A plus B. So we have A and B. And then we define something called reduced density matrix. which is we write row A, which is just simply by tracing out the other guy. So we focus on A and ignore all information about B. So we have this simple definition. So this is a density matrix for total system. The density matrix, the same for pure state. Pure state density matrix is just one state and trace out B. And then using this, so the meaning of reduced density matrix, we just ignore the information B. So we, we lose some part of information. So we are, coarse, some, we are doing some sort of coarse grain. We just ignore half of the space, for example. So we are doing some sort of coarse grain. So we have some ambiguity. We end up with just an ambiguity of information. Or observer, we can think just observer is only access 
accessible to region A, the subsystem A. And uh, this observer cannot see this region B. So it's much like black hole, and this is interesting connection, as we will see later. So in such a, anyways, in such a sense, so then we can talk about uh, entanglement entropy. So this E, so entanglement entropy is defined to be SA, we just write it SA, and minus trace rho log rho, namely this is a, a von Neumann entropy. This is a von Neumann entropy. Well, as we just mentioned, but uh, there are many other versions of entropy, for example, called something called Rainy entropy, but always von Neumann entropy has the best property. Also, interestingly, if we think about uh, ADS-CFT, so some natu most natural quantity which we have as an entropy is always von Neumann entropy. So there are very interesting uh, connections between them. And uh, we can just go back to the, our original, uh, our just a uh, simple example, which I mentioned, it's just two qubit system. So we, we can try, this maybe first it's called psi one, just direct product state. Uh, okay, well. So this case, point is that even though we talk about post graining, some tracing out B, but still this is also still pure. This is a pure state. Still pure state, so that means entropy is zero. So indeed, this entanglement tends to be major as amount of entanglement. So now we go to the second one, non-trivial one. So then, if we think about phi plus, so this is a square root two, zero, zero, one, one. And uh, so that case, the way is very easy. Right? We have this A and B. So we trace out, so maybe write it more. Right? And this is A, B. So we trace out B, then what we find, just half, right, like this, and uh, one, one. Uh, maybe we can write in the matrix form, it's like one, half, one, half. So then, it is obvious, right, this entropy is like log two. The entropy is just log two. There are two degrees of freedom. So just come from spin, up, down, spin. And if we have some spin j state, there are you know, two j plus one state, so the entropy is log of two j plus one. This is a maximum, this is actually maximum value of entropy. So that's the reason we call this a maximally entangled state. But we have, at the same time, this is quite an elementary thing, but I'd like to uh, stress that we should de uh, distinguish this state, this is AB, right, defined in this state, and other state, this is actually classical state. So this is a similar uh, superposition. This is the only diagonal component of the density matrix. If you think about this density matrix, like combined blur and okay, you get the off-diagonal component, but this is diagonal. So if we compute entanglement entropy for this guy, and again, obviously, we get the same density reduced density matrix, right, if we turn it. So again, we get log two, right? So you might think this is, a, oh, 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 these two guys are the same value, so maybe this is also entanglement, but there are no entanglement, no entanglement at all. So this is, because the reason is very intuitively clear, that this is just a classical, super, classical probability distribution. So this state is somehow linear combination, but the point is that this state is just definite state, just pure state. We know, if we have this, then we, we can say it, we know the completely completely the state, what state looks like. But if we have this case, we, we have ambiguity, right? So it's just probability distribution. And also if we go back to this definition, so of course this does not satisfy the condition that we are thinking about pure state. So for this, to understand this quantum entanglement for this kind of state, we need another uh, definition, which namely mixed state <laughs> quantum entanglement. I will briefly mention why that's not so easy later. Okay, so I just finished the uh, uh, definition of entanglement entropy and quantum entanglement. If any question, please ask this moment. Okay. 
So now I go to the more properties of entanglement entropy. And uh, so there are many properties, no? especially some many inequalities. No? But essentially, the most important one is the following one. So this is very basic one. So first one, let's assume this total density matrix is pure. So namely, so we can write this is written this way, some wave function. So then, we immediately you see, so we, to we decompose total system right into two parts, right? So HA times HB. So we immediately find SA equal to SB. So this means that not uh, extensive. So usually some, some dynamical entropy is extensive, right, proportional to volume. But so here we can imagine right, so A is very small Hilbert space, B is very, very large. But, but nevertheless, if we assume total system is pure, then always this is true. So even though the B is large and A is small, this is always true. So that means uh, no extensive property. So this is a very important part. Uh, quantum entanglement is not ex extensive. And, uh, <coughs> and so it, it is very easy to prove this. So this row AB, so now we talk about, ah, so yeah, AB, but we can write the row AB also. But anyway, yeah, so the point is that we can use some sort, sort of, so very basic, a theorem of this linear algebra, namely Schmidt decomposition. So always we can decompose under some certain basis. Basis we can always decompose this way. This is bounded by number of dimension of a or b. So always this. Then this row, row a, equal to. Uh, <coughs> so you, you see that uh, lambda i and i a. But also, if we use the same thing for B, we get the same, same expression. So SA equal SB equal just uh, right, minus lambda i log lambda i. Just uh, I mean, Shannon entropy. So this is very important. And then this actually tells us the difficulty about, uh, I mean, mixed state or multi-partite entanglement. So if we have some, so we are talking about two-body entanglement, two-body correlation, that's what I mentioned. But if we are interested in three-body uh, correlation, so it's very complicated because we don't have a Schmidt decomposition of three parties. So that's actually one of the basic problem why we, we have some, I mean, more multi-partite thing is more non-trivial. But anyway, for, for anyway, so here we focus on bipartite uh, correlation, entanglement, so this is, very, we have a very beautiful story here. <coughs> and another one is, uh, uh, <coughs> Another one is called strong subjectivity. So simply, we often we write it SSA. This is an inequality when we have some system decompose A, B, C, and we can assume also some other guy. And we, we, we can think about some density matrix, rho A, B, C, we just consider rho A, B, C, so if we, we can trace out this D, so then we get a mixed state. This is general mixed state. So in this case, we can always prove that SSA, which means A, AB means A union, as I already I used, but A, A union B, same as And BC is bounded by, ah, sorry, bounded by SB plus SABC. So this is a very basic inequality, and also, we can also rewrite this following way. So we have A plus B. This is equivalent.
So if we want to see this connection, so we can pretty purify the system. So once you purify the system, so this goes to, so it's assumed A, B, C, D is a pure state. So we can increase the number of dimension of D, D, and always you can pre purify this state. That means A, B, C can be written some, some very large Hilbert space, enough large Hilbert space, some pure state. So always we can find such a pure state. This is a purification. So then we can see this is a SD, right? And, uh, and you can say this is actually a, we use this property, right? For pure state, these two guys are the same. So this is equivalent to complement AD, right? So if we do this, then, you know, B and D is here. B and D is exactly the same as this inequality. So these two guys are equivalent. And of course, there are also there are many interesting inequalities, which is also related to strong subjectivity, especially when this is saturated. There are interesting story called Markov chain and so on, also present in Ponomo. But uh, in my talk, uh, I don't want to mention this so much because uh, this number of lectures are limited, and I'm not going to use. And also, I'd like to mention, even though I don't have enough time to explain, but these inequalities actually more um, kind of systematically understand from the something called monotonicity, monotonicity of relative entropy. Unfortunately, I don't have time to discuss relative entropy, but I just write the definition. And this is like this. This. <coughs> so it's like relative entropy just measure the distance between rho and sigma. <coughs> and uh, so this has uh, some nice monotonic uh, monotonicity. So that means, it, it, so this kind of distinguishability between the two different density matrix and if we Sorry, maybe? Symmetric. These are, no, no, not, not symmetric. Yeah, that's what we have. Yeah. So the, if we assume rho and sigma is very close to each other, this becomes symmetric. But uh, in general, this is not. But this, nevertheless, this has a nice interpretation in terms of distinguishability between these two states, rho and sigma. And uh, so the monotonicity means that if we coarse grain, that means you can just assume some tracing of some part. Right? We tracing of some part, rho of sigma. Then, so we fine, distinguishability is reduced, right? Because we, we lose some information. And indeed, this quantity gets decreased. And that inequality is equivalent, known to be equivalent to this strong subjectivity. But this monotonicity is some, say something more. Not only tracing out, but we can act to some other operation. Always, I mean, oh, if, that's, if this is a physical operation, this is always monotonically decreasing. So this is stronger compared with strong. <laughs> and But anyway, so, so uh, unfortunately, I don't have enough time to explain. And then I also mention, would like to mention this is also useful for our later purpose. This is a Rényi entropy, Rényi entanglement <coughs> entropy. <coughs> this is a kind of generalization of this von Neumann entropy. So this is defined simply this way 1 minus n and log of trace rho a to nth power. So log rho is often turned out to be very difficult to compute. So we start with this kind of just power of density matrix. And then if we take n goes to one limit, so this is just a, uh, this is just derivative, right? This becomes derivative and we recover just von Neumann entropy. On the so this is the same as entanglement. So n1 equal to n2, but this is more generalized. And indeed, in uh, actual calculation in conformal field theory, we use this formulation and take n equals to one limit, called replicatory. Okay, so, so these are uh, basic uh, 
quantities which we we gonna play with. So we now, but now I'd like to mention some quantum information theoretical ingredient of this interpretation. Of this. So this is kind of definition is good. So this is a clear definition, mathematical definition. But maybe right, we are wondering why this is really measures the amount of quantum entanglement. So so I mean. Or maybe even the definition of measurement of quantum entanglement. What does it mean? Okay. So I'd like to give some uh, short answer to this question, but uh, without telling actual details. But uh, if you are more interested in this, uh, please look at the uh, textbook of quantum information I refer to. But I just give some quick review of what we know. So I just yes this part. So this is sounds, you can see this as an operational, operational meaning. Quantum uh, entanglement and And but for that we have to introduce uh, So we have to introduce some operation called LOCC. LOCC means local operation <coughs> and classical communication. So this is, we, we, anyway, we are interested in two body system, A, B, as before. And let's assume these two guys are very far apart. And if we do some, if we think of some experiment, what we can do? So we can do some very sophisticated quantum operation, quantum experiment in each laboratory. Laboratory A and B, maybe they are separated by 1,000 kilometer. So we can do some quantum operation, very sophisticated experiment, individually, separately. Independent. But uh, we can also send some results of measurement by telephone or emails or such classical device. So this communication, we can do it. It's a classical communication means just sending information in terms of just classical bits, right? Classical bits. But we can do some quantum operation. <coughs> in A or B independently. Uh, so this is local. So this means uh, this is called quantum operation. But uh, so because we are do it, we do it in a local. So this is called local operation. It's called local operation. And this operation includes not only unitary transformation but also projection measurement. In other words, you can also add some extra qubits here and do some unitary transformation or measurement and so on. And you can send many, 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 any times you can send the classical information. Between. So we are just, this is quite an I mean, experimental kind of setup, which we can, most of physics, physicists probably agree. So this is quite an interesting operation. But uh, this operation has also interesting mathematics, which we will explain. If this definition is not so good, so then we, get, we don't get a good result for, I mean, <coughs> of this quantity. So, but I, ah, okay. But before we go to the uh, definition of another definition of entanglement entropy, I just give one good example of a LCC. Probably you have heard, but this is namely quantum teleportation. Then we will see some rough idea of how it goes. Um, but this is quite a basic thing. So idea is just we have some entangled pair. So this we anyway the aim of here is that we have to quantify entanglement and the basic entanglement object is a Bell pair. So we assume some Bell pair. So and then ask what we can do. Right? If we have a Bell pair, what we can do? So then this Bell pair is a kind of resource of teleportation, which I will explain here. So teleportation means we have some state x. 
we have some extra qubit here. And uh, so we have some state here. So like A, let's take a linear combination, B, zero, X, right? We want to teleport, send this same state to the other side. This A and B, this is in the same laboratory, and these two guys are far apart, maybe 1,000 kilometers. We want to teleport this guy to the other guy. And then what we can do, but this is very easy from the viewpoint of quantum mechanics. So idea is to do some projection measurement here, some projection. And at the same time, so then we get some state and we have, actually, <laughs> we can, we have some, we can understand what state, right, we get here. And then we send this information to B, B guys. We send the information to this B and act a little bit of unitary, some unitary transformation depending on the consequence of this measurement. Some, uh, okay, there are four possibilities, and then we recover this state x. So I'll, I'll give this uh, simple procedure. This is actually mathematically obvious if we look at the wave function in this system. So we talk about, so we start with this AB, it's a maximally entangled. So that means AB state is a, this psi plus, this bell pair, which you, we define there. So we are thinking, of a total system is like this. Right, so we have this x state and the phi plus state, AB. And then we can just mathematically rewrite this in the following form. This is very elementary, AB. So let us remember that there are, uh, sorry, not AB, xA. Now we combine A and X, but this is all possible. There are four different bases, right? So which I introduce for better pairs. So A zero and B E. So this is a, a first possibility. Another possibility is like psi minus A zero, and this is a minus sign there. Little different. And psi plus, which I defined before, another bell state, which is like, <laughs> and now A, B is flipped. This is now one, and this is plus B zero. And finally, psi minus. Like minus, minus B zero. So, but from this, which is obvious, if we measure this XA system, right, this is in the same laboratory, so then we can have a four different possibilities. We do some projection measurement, and if we, if we, we are fortunate that if we get this uh, first state, this one, if we get this one, we, we are done, right? This is exactly, this state is the same as original X state. But of course, so at least, I mean, probability, right? quarter probability we, we are successful. But in uh, other case, we get something different. But nevertheless, we can act some unitary transformation for each different case. So very easy to find unitary transformation. Anyway, if we do the measurement and we know either of this realize, then if we, we have psi plus, we can act special unitary transformation U2 and convert this guy into this X state, which means this. So that way, so, and we can do the same thing for other case. So this is a basic idea of quantum teleportation. And here, we actually have a, an important ingredient of LOCC. So we, do, we did this unitary, uh, sorry, we, we did this projection measurement. With the, well, sometimes we have some extra cubits, fine. Actually here, this is a quantum operation. This is the LO, this part is LO. But we send uh, an information, this is a classical communication. This case is very easy because we can just need to send one, uh, some, I mean, information just one time. But here we send actually, we, we, it is good to know that we have a two bit, two classical bit information we send. So that way we have one, so EPR, so what we learn is that uh, one qubit, qubit entanglement, uh, Entanglement plus two bit, two classical bit, 
information, classical communication, it gives some teleportation. And these are uh, obviously inside LOCC. So this means that this is actually the fact that we have a quantum entanglement has some kind of resource, some power. So if we have some, a lot of quantum entanglement, maybe n copy of this, we can send n qubits information. So that way, this uh, amount of quantum entanglement is quite, quite uh, very useful for this kind of operational purpose. And using this idea, we'd like to quantify uh, this entanglement, quantum entanglement, entanglement, every entanglement entropy. So, so now we come to operational definition. Actually, this is a definition of entanglement entropy, a con uh, entanglement entropy in quantum information. For us, it's kind of sort of theory because we know this original entropy definition, my trace law of So we start with this definition. So this is much like theory, but for quantum information people, they only think about this. They very stick to this idea of operational idea. And this is very, I mean, powerful for experimental way of thinking, and uh, this is actually starting point of the definition. So this idea is like this. So we started Psi, AB. So this, uh, again, we, we focus on pure state. This is a given, given pure state. Or AB system. And then what we do is the following thing. So basic idea is just using this LOCC. We, can, we want to rely this in simple form. So this is a very complicated entanglement, but uh, we know the simple, simplest unit of quantum entanglement, namely Bell pairs. So if we, have a, if we only have a Bell pairs, we can just count the number of Bell pairs. So this is a kind of quantitative way of describing quantum entanglement. So, but uh, there are some subtlety of this calculation, some non-trivial point. So to, and to get a nice result, we need to take a n copy of this system. So this is a kind of technical, I think this is called some asymptotic limit. But for first time, maybe we can ignore this. And so we have this system, this original system of very complicated entangled system. But we act LOCC and simplify this. And then after simplification, we get Bell pairs. So uh, we, we just call this, we can map this to other guy by local operation. So we, don't, we, are, we only have one non-trivial uh, Kind of types of <coughs> Bell pairs. So these two, are, there are four possibilities, but they are right. I mean, modify. I mean, map to each other by local operations. So they are essentially same class. So we have this some number, and this we get some number n. Let's assume, but we can, if we have, if we have some number of Bell pairs, some, some also some other right contaminations. So we, we don't write it. But anyway, if we have some number of Pairs. But we can think we have to optimize this number, right? We have to maximize the number which we can extract from this. If we do it naively, we don't get any, I mean, very pairs. So we have to maximize it. And also, we have to ask the following thing, like some dynamic equilibrium. We should be able to reproduce the same state from uh, some number of EPR pairs. So this is called, this part is, uh, yeah, this is called distillation. Uh, this, this is called distillation. Distillation, distillation of EPR pairs, uh, Bell pairs. And this is actually formation. Formate this original system. <coughs> and, but good thing about pure state Actually, these two guys are reversible. So if we, you get some maximum number of M, right, by LOCC, and if we assume same number, we can actually reconstruct original system. And if we decrease the number a little bit, then no longer we don't have a correct system. So this is, a, so important point is this is reversible. Or pure state. 
This is a quite famous known fact in quantum information. This is quite important. So if we think about the mixed state, this is no longer true. So that has a problem. But anyway, for pure state, this is very good. And then, the, now I come to the main point. So then we take this limit. So we, we go here. So we, we are thinking about this. And the limit. And so we take n divided by n, and n goes to infinity. And we are interested in this maximum number, which we can <coughs> reconstruct, as we can have for very pure. This is actually turns out to be entanglement entropy. So this is a very, I mean, fundamental connection between this von Neumann entropy and this entanglement entropy. So this case, of course, SV is here, right? And this low log. So this is, a, I mean, how we understand entanglement entropy in an operational way. So this is a very definite thing. And it's sort of analogous to thermodynamical equilibrium for pure state. But however, however, for mixed state, there is no, there is no reversible. of LOCC procedure, some LOCC uh, extraction of. <laughs> so that way, so we can actually uh, have a two quantity at least. So we, we can define first this arrow, right? We can define this quantity, how many EPR pairs we can uh, construct. So this is called entanglement of distillation, ED. This is actually called ED. So number of, and this is defined for just general mixed state. Yes. Ah, yes. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Up to this point, is it visible? Or I see. So sorry. Yeah. So we we define some entanglement of this situation. So which you call AED, low AB. This is a, a maximum number. Of bell pairs. We get. We get from sign. Uh, sorry, no, low AB. And we have also another quantity is called entanglement, entanglement cost. So this is a minimum number. Number of bell pairs. Bell pairs uh, from which we can construct the original state, low AB. And this is the issue. And uh, we know that, so this is, so maybe this is also not, so I just need to write it here. So, so let's write this way. So the ED is uh, always smaller. EC. <coughs> so always we need a lot of EPR pairs, uh, bell pairs to reconstruct this state, but the amount of, of EPR pairs which we can extract from size is limited. And uh, actually, for mixed state in general, this is true. So we are not sure which one we should take. And uh, there are many. In principle, probably infinitely many, but uh, there are several choice of entanglement measure known in mixed state. And this inequality is saturated only for pure state. But anyway, this is the reason why many entanglement measure 
with the whole mixed state. Yes. Oh, but, but if you have a extract some number of bell pairs, you can, I mean, reverse the procedure, basically. So anyway, you, can, you want to somehow extract some number of EPR pairs, right? And uh, so, yeah, you, you fail some, uh, so in principle, this psi, you can reconstruct some number of EPR pairs, right? So we have some number of EPR pairs, and if we assume this is realized, right? But if we do the same thing, right? This is not, this itself is not a reversible procedure, right? It's not guaranteed to be, get this number. So it's quite, because of kind of contamination of the operation. Yeah, so I, I think yeah, I just die here.